Lickerland are proud partners of the Pies Nation podcast for another season of footy. Lickerland have all your drink needs for when the siren calls. Pop into your local Lickerland today or shop online to pick up all your favourite drinks. And Marcus, Lickerland are just as reliable as the Pies at the moment. They're right on board. They are, Nico, right at the top of their game. Lickerland, from the land you love, please drink responsibly. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pies Nation podcast, where the Pies are hot. And the drinks are cold. My name is Nicholas Sacco, your host again for this week's episode, episode 7 of season 5 or episode 120. If you're counting from the beginning, another huge episode in more ways than one today as we escape with a six-point victory over the Saints to end Gavin around with a 4-1 and one record. While it's great to get back on the winner's list, our injury list continues to grow. Today, with a very special guest, we chat through the St Kilda match, wrap up things in the VFL Go through another round of Ask Pies Nation and speak to another guest, the crowd competition winner. But more importantly, joining me today in the studio are two very special people. The first one being a man who is celebrating his 99th Pies Nation podcast episode, Marcus Callahan. Welcome. Not out. Not out. Well, I don't know. Whatever way you want to put it, as long as you're coming back next week, that'd be no, great. The nervous 90s, and I'm looking forward to doing the 100th ep after a big win against the Bombers, Nico. Can't wait. We'll get some balloons ready for you, mate. Don't worry. But... The big special guest here in the studio. Drum roll. 96 AFL games, 103 AFL goals, <laughs> 2018 Neil Danaher Trophy, and the star of the Mason Cox show, Mason Cox. Welcome. Thank you so much. Congrats on the Don Bradman, by the way. Yeah, now, <laughs> that's, that's a little going. bit of my Australian history I'm learning. Uh, there we go. I'm getting there. Uh, no, it's awesome. Thanks so much for having me on. It's um, credit to you guys. You've been doing an amazing job. And um, yeah, it's a, an honor to be on the podcast. Well, it's an honour to have you on, Mace. I think every Collingwood fan, knowing that you've been coming on, they all want to know how you're feeling, how's the recovery process going, and is there any slim chance you'll be back in a week's time to face the Bombers on Anzac Day? Um, I think the adjective you used was slim chance is probably the uh, the best way to put it. Now, I've got... Uh, the, probably the update is I've got a, um, a doctor's appointment on Thursday, give me a bit more information on time frame, and then a CT scan on Monday. Mm. Um, and then that's that's always a really interesting one. But uh, they'll give me some more information. But at the moment, it's um, kicking back. Can't do anything physical for the last three weeks. So I've been, um, yeah, just focusing on the podcast and stuff, which has been good. Uh, but it's been, yeah, pretty low key for the last little chunk. And away from footy, in terms of the preparation, all that stuff's been parked for the moment. How have you been going? Sleeping, eating? Has there been any changes to your daily routine? Oh, sleeping like a baby. I've, yeah. <laughs> I've never got this much sleep in my life. Like I'm always doing like one thing or the other, and I'm sitting there at 8 p.m. going, I'm already like, I'm ready to go. I'm just ready cool. to go sleep. I guess like, I don't really know what to do with my time. So, um, no, it's it's been good. I think whenever you realize like you play AFL and how chaotic it can be at certain times. Uh, whenever you do have that time where it's kind of forced rest, mm. you take the most of it and you uh, you deal with it. Like, there's nothing I can do within my power to get my back faster or do anything, you know, to, to help me out in the future. So, um, at this point, it's just kind of, yeah, kicking back and just realizing that, like, this time is um, something you got to make the most of because it's not, not around very often. And rather do it this time of the season than at the end, if yeah. anything. That's that's the uh, that's the glass half full uh -huh. perspective I'm looking at. Is yeah. um, luckily it was at the beginning of the season, not the end, because it's such a weird injury. I tend to have weird yeah. injuries, um, and yeah, it's just uh, not ideal. And it's just kind of like a silly kind of thing that happened. But mm. uh, we we deal with it. And we move on, and mm. um, hopefully looking to the back half of the year of being healthy. <laughs> Yes. Well, look, the silver lining of you not playing is we get a lot more podcast content from mm. the Mason Cox show. Oh, yeah. Available wherever you get your podcasts, of course. Jeez, you've got the ad down, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> He's the host for a reason. <laughs> He's ready. killing He's it. 120 eps for a reason, Mace. Um, day. <laughs> no, it's been fantastic to see. And I think the highlight, no doubt, has been your live stream yesterday of that Saints oh, match, yeah. which we'll get to in a few moments. Oof. But um, you've been enjoying it at the moment with, with the podcast. Of course, Braden's been there to help you out too. But um, you must be really loving a new way of, I guess, the way the media is trending at the moment with podcasts. Yeah, it's uh, it's a new stream and a new avenue. I think probably 10 years ago, like no player really had their own chance of being able to give their opinion to the media. Um, where it's funny now, like you get opportunities, like I've seen other players and myself and whatnot being on the news, on the podcast, mm. talking about, I mm. guess, um, situations and games and things like that. So it's cool to be able to give players a voice. Like, you know, we, we probably didn't have that before. We weren't respected enough in that sense to do it. But now there's so many things that happen in a game that maybe – aren't i guess like advised by the players you know i think of like the ruck stuff as of recent like no player was asked you know yeah, what do you yeah. think about the ruck stuff you know <laughs> like what do you do you think we should change it like that doesn't that doesn't exist so 
Um, it gives, I guess, people that are in the industry playing the games and being the first-hand perspective an actual voice to, to be able to, mm. to give out to the public. And um, it's good. It's good. It challenges, um, I guess, the AFL at times. It challenges mm. probably people's opinions at times. And um, I think it's good to, to give someone's – or sorry, to have an opinion out there that's just someone that's actually playing the game. And Marcus, you mentioned that you listened to the recent episode with Jack Crisp coming on. Mm. Yeah. It's always great to see. One of our good friends, of course, being yeah. – Original Pies Nation podcast member himself. Didn't make it into the studio, but we got him on the on the uh, phone call. And I think Brody, Brody Majek snuck in as well. Was to in the car years, too. So that was very much on the fly. But yeah, in terms of the content that you cover on your podcast and its evolution, is it something mm-hmm. that you want to see remain very sports oriented? Or do you just kind of pick and choose the flavor of the, the day or the week with Braden? Like how do you see it unfolding into the future? Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's... Um it's unique to us. Like we do different things every single week. It's mainstay is sports. So we do cover the AFL as the main kind of stay there. But uh, we get a lot of different people on. Like we've had like Matt Preston on, mm. who's like a calling and match <laughs> chef. Obviously fan, everyone yeah. knows from Massive Marquee, Chef. Yeah. Uh, we've had Peter Hellier on, who's a comedian. Like we've had quite a few like different areas of people and they all have an amazing story and how they're connected to football and um, telling a bit about their life journey and everything else, which has been really cool being on the other side of the mic, you know, like, I mean, mm. I don't know if y'all have had experience, I guess, interviewing people, but it's cool to be able to have that medium to actually be on the other side and asking the question, questions rather than answering them, mm. answering them. So, yep. uh, yeah, we cover that. We've covered some really interesting stuff around <laughs> dating life. Of we course. do cover a bit of that. Uh, there's a bit of an entertainment section that we do every once in a while. And mm-hmm. we give the update on my dating life and Braden's dating life, which is quite depressing at times. But uh, it's a good fun. Uh, a lot of people love it because they seem to be in the same position. I don't know. Maybe we need to make another app to get these people together. I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, it's, it's good. There's uh, entertainment, but our mainstay is probably sport. Um, and then we have some amazing guests on. Like this week, we've got NHL. Uh, superstar coming on we've got Jock Dale coming on soon nice. uh, we've already recorded wow. but we'll release it so um, and then we've got another person who I can't see because we haven't released it but he is one of the most famous Australian athletes of all time so okay. wow. some really cool stuff going on um, oh, like it's amazing because I like I don't know in my life I had no connections to Australia whatsoever mm-hmm. and then kind of being I guess like the token American in an Australian sport you meet a lot of people that have mm-hmm. gone to America or had experiences with America and things like that and you get this real kind of close connection with them and uh, it's cool to kind of have that medium where you have a longer term conversation with them to to get the, break down those walls and be able to get to know them a bit better and share their story. But so it's been it's been awesome. I've loved it. I've always wanted to be, get into the media, so to have something of my own, I guess, with Brayden, who's helped me out so much. Um, between the two of us, we kind of have this this podcast to to be able to 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 grow and just kind of see where it goes and. Mm see how far it can take us. I love it. Well, if you weren't listening to it before with all those guests lined up, there's no reason why you shouldn't be listening mm. to it now. So it's gonna be a big make sure you get involved. <laughs> Let's get into this Saints review because we pretty much snuck through in the end. It was a pretty hairy last few minutes, but thank goodness we were able to get through in the end. Now, Mace, what we like to do when we start our reviews of games is we have yep. a segment. We call it the pie that caught your eye. And this is just one player or even a moment from a game that has caught our eye more often than not. And we like to highlight their performance throughout the match. So Marcus will give us a perfect example, as he always does, starting first. Well, controversial, Nico, but oh, I go. am yep. going with the pies that caught my eye oh, okay. this week. Just in general. Yeah. Okay. And the yep. reason being is the smothering. I have never <laughs> yeah, there seen. was some smothers on the week as if it was like a rainy day. <laughs> anything like it. Mm. It was unbelievable. I'm not sure what the final count 21. was. 21. 21. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I'm just like all in for the for the Collingwood playing group yesterday because it kept us in the match. I feel mm. like the ball was moving from end to end quite freely and being played between the arcs, a lot of those smothers created opportunities for new scoring chains. So props to the whole team. Nico. I've got a man here that I'm surprised you didn't mention because you, you basically loved him from the moment yeah, go he got on. drafted. IQ. Isaac Kleiner was my pie. Well, what a fantastic... Best game of the season for mine. 15 touches at 87%. A game high in pressure acts. A game mm. high in contested marks. He had to really play a lot taller than he usually is in that back six. And he got us out of some pretty scary moments with St. Kilda going inside forward 50. Especially in that second half. I think he was really pivotal. So... Um, yeah, fantastic game from IQ. And after last week, what happened against Charlie Cameron, he stood up and responded perfectly. Mace, would you say he's got some of the best hops at the club? IQ? <laughs> Hugh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Bobby Hill's up there for best hops. Actually, Ash, Ash Johnson yeah. can jump. That yeah, makes crazy hops. jump. I don't, yeah. I don't think he's probably got the best vertical. Tyler Brown used to have a freak vertical yeah. Yeah. Um, before, we, uh, before we kind of moved on. But um, 
Yeah, Q is just a freak athlete in general. Like that man, he, if you look at him with his shirt off, he just is like pure <laughs> muscle. Like there's not an ounce of fat on the man. Uh, very jealous of it. But <laughs> it's like he is just one of those people that is just a muscular human. Freak physique. Freak physique. Like just like an that. athlete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, anyway. That's, that's why you love him, Marcus, pretty much. That's well, the only no, reason. Truly, the, the reason I love him so much is because he was a good Oakley Chargers boy. Yes, and my brother used to be the physiotherapist down at yeah. Oakley. So Shout from a young him. age, uh, watched guys like Will Kelly, Darcy Moore, Isaac Quaino. There's a long list of Oakley Chargers boys. Nico, who have made it to Collingwood. So always had a soft spot for Isaac and great to see him play some awesome footy this season. Speaking of great people to see come back, Jack Ginevan made his return, of course, yeah. highly anticipated, was able to kick a pretty crucial goal as well at the start of that last quarter to get things going and ended up being enough for us to get the win. Now, of course, Jack, everyone knows his name now. 12 months ago, probably nobody did, but... Mm-hmm. What what's his mentality been like over the last couple of weeks? Is he's been slowly starting to get himself back into the, first the VFL and then eventually into the senior side as we see him fit now. What's what have been the differences in the last twelve months? You think? Uh, Jack's mentality. I think like confidence is a big thing with any player that's coming through the system, um, especially in those first you know few years. Like you have to get confidence and the trust from a coaching staff that mm. you know you're going to be able to play every week. So I think whenever you're trying to break it into the squad. Um, I've been in this position a lot as you, you feel like every game's a do or die kind of mm. game, you know, and if mm. you play bad, you're going to get dropped where um, one thing Craig's really good at is, you know, playing to your strengths and showing kind of what you're capable of on the field and him being able to make sure that you do um, your strengths out there to your best of ability. So I think with Jack, like it's, he, everyone knows he's a confidence player. He's a, he's a freak athlete out there and just has a sense for the goals. And mm. um, yeah, it's, it's something I think he's, probably that beginning of this year you know where he's had that time he's had to stay away for a bit uh from the afl team and play vfl he's probably learned that lesson that a lot of maybe other people don't get like where you kind of in and out of the team and stuff you have to go back and play vfl for a chunk Mm. um and he's he was probably looking at the fact that our squad was playing well with bobby and jamie and a few Mm. other smalls and and thinking, you know, where do I fit in the team? And um, I've been in that position quite a few times, but mm. um, it was good for him to get his um, his chance last night and he made the most of it. And it's a credit to him because uh, it's not an easy thing to do, I think, whenever the team's going well to try to break back into that team. Mm. Now, Nico, should we get a pie that caught your eye from Mace? I think that- so. I'll give you like four. If you want. <laughs> Pies that caught your eye? The pies pie that we can add that, Mason. of course. Um, my biggest one, Nathan Murphy. Oh, Love yeah. Murph. Back with a flight. Like yeah. he's not going to play this week. I think because he's been concussed. I want to say under concussion mm. protocol, which is unfortunate. Uh, with the situation that happened, which was ridiculous. Uh, but Nathan Murphy was just having an outstanding game, and I think probably the fact that he was playing so well, maybe gotten his uh, opposition's head a bit, and he uh, mm. unfortunately um, had copped one to the head. So mm. yeah, Murph is one of those players I think that's very underrated in the team. You talk about the John Nobles of the world and things like that. I think Murph is one mm. of those that because you have the superstars of Darcy Moore kind of playing next to him, he probably doesn't get as much you know notoriety beyond mm. uh, the playing group. And I thought he had a great game. He was awesome, played so well, and then. Um, yeah, I, like, I guess the other one I probably have to say, there's, like the forward line was good, like with all the three smalls, but it's a tough one as an only big. So like shout out to Billy Frampton, mm. Ash Johnson, Brody Marchek. Yeah, I don't think any one of them is probably sitting there going, I want to be the tallest guy on the ground. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> over the weekend, that was essentially what happened. Mm. So Chegas, like might not be, you know, the flashiest, uh, you know, next few games for him if Damnick stays out because he's going to have to be playing that, that tall role and he's probably not going to be, you know, getting the ground level stuff as much. He's going to have to play a bit of a, um, the second fiddle to maybe some of the, the smalls that, where he's trying to get the ball to ground so that the Jamie Elliott's, the Bobby Hills, the Jack Innes of the world can kind of get their, their touch of the footy. So uh, it's a credit to him because it's, uh, it's not an easy position to be in whenever you're not getting the stats, you're not getting the marks and things like that. And you kind of maybe feel a bit out of it because you're not getting uh, the ball as much. But I think he rises given the fact of his experience, mm-hmm. just bringing the ball to ground and get other people involved and to be able to get us meters gained is a big big um, thing that he's going to have to do over the next few weeks. Good point you make about Billy Frampton too. I think he was outstanding having to play that role in the ruck. I know we tried a few things with that Brisbane game, but seeing Frampton come in and of course risking him not being in that back line because he's been brilliant there as well. So having to take him out of that position, put him into almost a brand new one, I think he delivered pretty well, Marcus. Absolutely. And he deserved a goal. I thought that oh, when he, yes. <laughs> he, he <laughs> pinned the ears back and I don't think I've seen Billy run so fast on the field, <laughs> oh, at least in Collingwood colours. But was it the Adelaide Oval? Is that why he looks so comfortable out there, Mace? Or is he oh, in he's... the ruck in the centre? What do you reckon? Um, I'm not too sure. Like he's he's played a lot of games. Obviously, he's, his previous club's Adelaide and uh, or played in Adelaide. And 
Um, I think Billy, people don't realize how big he is. I think he's yeah. got the biggest, probably he's probably the strongest guy at the club. Yeah. Um, he's got the best bench press, I think, at the club. And um, he's not an easy person to move. Don't get me wrong, Billy's not <laughs> a guy I'm probably putting against Bobby in a, a 50 meter sprint by any means. But um, I think he can, he's big enough to, he can hold his own. He's got not like a freakish amount of height. Like he's not as tall as someone like myself, but he's got enough bulk to him to be able to hold people off. Mm. And that's what putting it was putting him in good stead. Like I think of, you know, last week, uh, Dan McStay is kind of the same. Like his body, his base is so strong, it's hard to move him. So, you know, if he can play that role and make sure he mitigates what the other Ruckman can do, then that's that's all they're going to ask from him, really. Yep. Um, and I thought he did pretty well over the weekend. And um, I'm trying to think who we're playing this week. We got Draper and uh, Phillips. So mm. it's going to be a big, big kind of um, challenge for him with two essential real Ruckman in there and mm. him, him trying to essentially play as a, you know, as a Ruckman in. in trial at the moment yeah. so yeah. Yeah. it's going to be an interesting week for billy frampton but um yeah time will tell what's fly's approach been like to that ruck situation over the last couple of weeks it hasn't been an easy one for him to navigate through but um from the outside looking in you know what fly's like he's just the most calmest person in the world yeah it's um oh gosh i don't know like how to put it to be honest like to have myself go down and then essentially the one person after that you're going can't afford another injury to another mm. Rockman. And then Darcy Cameron goes down and two games in a row, he's probably going, geez, mm. Louise, this is uh, not ideal. But uh, yeah, he's been good. He's calm about it. Like they go through the situations of kind of, you know, what to do from here on out. And mm. maybe it's a bit more conservative mindset um, around it, just knowing that, you know, you have someone who's not as experienced in there. And But like I said, I think they've been playing really well. So um, yeah, Craig's not a person to get stressed. Like I no. wouldn't look at him and say no stressed. Way. Like if I've ever seen Craig stressed, I'd probably go to him and ask if he's all right. <laughs> um, but no, he's he's a very kind of um, I don't know. He's he's very smart in the way he kind of handles situations and knows that the way he handles it can be passed down to players and coaches in the way you know he handles whatever it may be. So he's very smart in the way he his people management is. I think and of himself and also others and. Uh, it's a credit to him. I think that's why he won Coach of the Year and stuff like yeah, last year with hmm. you know a team that people thought weren't going to really make anywhere near what we did in the top four. So yeah, he's uh, he's one of those coaches I've got a real close connection with and have nothing but positive things to say about. And well, you- if you ask one of our other Pies Nation members in Luke, we were winning the flag halfway through last year. So hmm. he was definitely not one of those that was thinking <laughs> that we were going to be bottom four, that's for sure. Just coming back to fly and digging a little bit deeper, now that we're sort of 12 to 18 months down the line, I know he came in wanting to instill winning habits and showing up each day to work, just wanting to get better. Are you starting to feel the fruits of that labor starting to mature even more this season? And I, oh, No one would have guessed what would have happened last year so quickly. It was amazing as a fan to watch that. But do you feel that proliferate into season 2023 as well? Yeah, I think the biggest thing now is we just have a year under our belt under the experience of playing the way he wants to play. Mm. Like anytime a new coach comes in, they change things up. Like there's probably question marks around in certain situations, am I supposed to do this or am I supposed to do that? And like yep. now that we have a year of experience knowing that, I think everyone that's kind of been part of that AFL team and, and the VFL and has been around is, is pretty understanding of when this happens, this is how you're supposed to act mm-hmm. or this is supposed to, you know, this is how you're supposed to, to react from a structural standpoint or whatever it may be. So um, it's not our game plan, I wouldn't say, has changed, you know, exponentially from last year to this mm-hmm. year. Um, and the guys we've brought in that are playing at the moment. So you got um, old Brownlow medalist and like everyone else <laughs> that's Dan McStay and all them. Like they have been really good in picking it up. Like yeah. even like Billy Frampton too. Like it's not, sometimes you get a player that comes in and they ask a lot of questions and they feel a bit lost on the field. Like I've never felt as though someone is not 100% understanding of what they're supposed to do at a mm-hmm. certain time in a certain situation in a game. So um, getting some more, I guess, mature age players over from, uh, from the trade period has definitely been a positive for us. And you know, hopefully it can take us to another level whenever it comes to the end of the year this year. But um, yeah, it's I don't know. I think Craig's got a really interesting coaching style that is more this new school way mm. um, of uh, very much, you know, each player is very different in the way they, you know, react to feedback and the way they handle situations. And he's very well aware of that. And he's mm. really really, I guess, like intelligent in the way he, you know, his personal relationships with people are and everything like that. So, um, yeah, it's any, he, any he sets a winning standard. Like I think last year we talked about, I think we we're at Adelaide Oval or something and someone had, or sorry, oh, I can't remember which game it was. And one person laid down on the ground. He said, that's not how we are. Like if we mm-hmm. lose a game, we stay on our feet. And yeah, I was real nervous when that happened because about 
four games earlier, I would play Rocket in Adelaide and I'd laid on the ground because I was so fucking <laughs> exhausted. <laughs> and I will just seeing my mom going, please don't play that clip. Please. And there was like an like a photo that was out there, Bo picking me off the ground. Oh, and right it away. was everywhere. And I was just like, good Lord, this is not going to bode well yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, it's uh, he's, he's been really good with that. And he's, he's one of those people, if he says something, he means it. Mm-hmm. And um, if you have questions, you can go to him and he'll answer them. And sometimes it might not be exactly what you want to hear, but at least you know where you stand in the, cl- like in the club and in the team. So would you say he's people first, athlete second in terms of how he manages the people that are in his direct contact or athlete first, people second? How would you No, it's, it? it's it's the person first. Like I think mm. um, there's definitely been situations at the club um, that maybe haven't been public where, you know, someone might miss a day or whatever it mm-hmm. might be for family reasons. And like, he's been totally understanding of that. Um, and that's, I think that's important to know that he always says families first. And um, yep. you can see in our locker room, we have a lot of kids there, uh, parents, partners, all that kind of stuff at the game yep. um, and post game and whatnot. So um, he does, doesn't just preach it. He also breathes it. Mm-hmm. And um, he's got a beautiful little girl, Charlie um, and his wife, Gab. And, um, they are part of the club just as much as anyone else. And you see them around the club and uh, around the change rooms and stuff and give them hugs and whatnot. And you just kind of feel like they're family, which yep. is good. And that's, I think, what you want to build as an environment. So he's gone really well. And I think the way he's handled the situation of changing over like head coaches um, and got to know everyone really well and set a, 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 a serious standard from the start. Mm-hmm. Now, moving on to another man that we love to admire here. Uh, apart mm. from you, apart from you two, of course, we, I love more on you two, Nick. Um, <laughs> Nick Dacos. Now we we seem to spend five to ten minutes every week talking about this man and how freaky she is and his ability to just do incredible things with the football we've never seen before. Again, t- yesterday, forty two touches, twenty seven kicks, almost nine hundred meters gained, which is absurd. I don't, I don't reckon I've seen that stat reach bigger than six seven hundred before. But he he just plays for fun. It just looks like he's out there in his own paddock. He's got Josh on the other side of the field, and they just like to play kick to kick. And the, the question is, will he break his disposal record the next time he gets to Adelaide Oval? Because I'm pretty sure he had 40 disposals and three goals against the oh, Crows yes, last season. So yeah. I don't know why he loves South Australia so much, but all four gather around if Nick Dacos is having 40 licks and uh, <laughs> winning us the game three Brownlow votes. I'll tell you that. It's What's his small, secret? It's a small ground. Yeah. His, he's cheeky. You'll see whenever he plays. So if anyone <laughs> takes a, a, a mark uh, in the defense, he comes and he'll wheel around, get the handball received. Oh, right. So you see Murphy probably like had, what, 10 intercepts. <laughs> yeah. Guaranteed every single one of those 10, Nick Dacos is just sweating behind <laughs> yeah. him going, ball, 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 ball. He works and hard he to get to the drop. But, but yeah. that's kind of part of it, though, because yeah. we'll back Nick's kick in. No offense, Murph, but like Nick's a better <laughs> kick than you. So we'll back him in trying to break lines and be able to kick like an inside 45 kick. So mm. it's part of the plan. Like it's not – it's not Nick being selfish by any means. It's like we encourage him to do that because of it. that's his skill set mm. and that's his strength. So that's why he gets so many touches. And then every once in a while, you know, he'll say, oh, I need another 50 meters gain. So he'll go take the kick out. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, you know, yeah. it's one of those things. But no, he's a, he's a freak player. Like, mm. and it's, yeah, we, everyone talks about it every single week because he's, you know, 19 years old and one of the best players on our team. It's crazy. And we've been, and others have been referring to him as the quarterback. And to your point about him going and getting the easy handball received, he's cost, copped a bit of flack in terms of getting a lot of uncontested possessions. But flack. To your point, that's exactly what we've said on the pod. Would you not want it in his hands all the time? Because he draws players to the ball. He makes things happen that others can't. He takes risks. It's exciting to watch. Yeah, I mean, there's been a few times I think Nick's probably I've given a handball to him and he's backtracked and had to kick back and you look at him, you go, what are you doing? But um, no, but I think like, you know, most of the time, and that's why you give it to him instinctively. Like I'll mark it and if he's running past me, I don't even have to care what's in front of me. I'm mm. giving it to him because like, I'm back in the fact that, you know, I'm good in the air and he's good on the ground and he's good at kicking. Like, mm. And that's just kind of what everyone brings to the table. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know, people are always going to talk trash. This is the Australian way. It's like since you build someone up to break them down to build them back up again. So mm. I'm sure Nick, um, and he'll be aware of this. Like, I'm sure people will tell him because he's so, I guess, prevalent in the media at the moment. But there will be a moment, I think, in his career where we'll all build him up. He'll win a brown, though, wherever it is. You know, everyone thinks he's the greatest thing ever. And then the media will look for chinks in the armor and mm. try to like break him back down. And um, it's, a, it's a cyclical thing. Like Everyone seems to have done it before in their career. But... He's a, he's a pretty level-headed man, and obviously he's got the, the support of his brother. He's got his dad who's been through quite a bit and everything else, and mm-hmm. an amazing team, I think, culture around him that whenever that moment does come, you know, a lot of people wrap their arms around him. And seeing Josh just flourish because of how well Nick's been, I mean, hasn't just been entirely out of course, but his progression over the last four, five, six years, I remember when he first came onto the scene and you know, there were supporters 
saying that. Why, should, why is he in the 22? Why is he even on the list just because of the Josh last Dacos. name? Josh Dacos. Josh yeah, Very, yeah. very early. But you look at what he's done in the last four or five years. It's been outstanding. And I think it's a full credit to not only the way that you guys have been playing in the last couple of years, but just enjoying the environment that he's in. Yeah, I think it's... Um, I, 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 I try to put myself in other people's shoes. And Josh is having an amazing year. And it's mm. it sucks because it's like... It's good also. I mean, like, it, it sucks in the fact that, like, his brother's playing really well and, like, he would be so supportive of his brother. But, mm. like, sometimes I feel like the media and, I guess, attention gets drawn away from how well Josh is playing because his brother's playing well. And, um, yeah, it's 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 phenomenal. Like, I look at players, you know, of Josh's status and they're, like, you know, the most talked about player on the team. And then it's, like, here because his brother's playing really well and he's young and he's this prodigy and all this kind of stuff. You know, he probably doesn't get, the like, the media he probably would. So, yeah. Uh, it's tough, man. I feel for him, but yeah, he's he's having a freak here, and yeah. he's playing really well too. And I think it's yeah, it's probably put on the back burner a bit. But there's some other players in the midfield that are doing a bit more grunt work, maybe, and you know maybe Nick's getting more attention for that, where other things don't get as much attention. Uh, but as long as we're winning at the end of the day, I think everyone's on the same page and everyone's happy. Like Nick, as a 19 year old, I think he handles media really well. Um, Very I well. Think so he's, mature. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's like something that as a player and someone who's been through it, like it's not an easy thing to teach. It's not an easy thing to be able to grasp and be able to have the nervousness of like after a game, not wanting to make sure you say the right things and all that. And um, he speaks really well. Like Darcy Moore is another person like that who was mm. 18, 19 that could speak yep. really well also. And um, there's little things like that. I think that add to just him as a person that like you won't see very often elsewhere. Um, and it's a credit to him, but yeah, Josh is, Josh is a fanta- fantastic player and he's playing really well. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. He's he's one of those players. I think you just constantly just go, yep, tick, put him on the board. Like he's on the <laughs> team. Like you don't have to think about it. 100%. Before we move on from the Saints game, we mentioned off the top your live stream yesterday mm. of the last couple of minutes. Now, you got to play in all our close wins last year and you didn't haven't really had the full experience, I guess, of going through the whole game, just sitting there. We got to see Crouch underneath the couches oh, <laughs> those last couple geez. of goals went not through not the only one how yeah. did it feel <laughs> how did it feel watching as a supporter seeing the oh. um, getting us just oh, I don't even know how to describe it it was just a last minute burst of here we go again we're going to blow this but then in the back of my mind it's like oh you know actually we're okay I was cool we know what we're doing were you? <laughs> you were calm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how did it feel else. as a supporter it's weird playing, sorry, not playing and watching games. Mm. Um, and it's this helpless feeling of feeling like, oh, I can help, like, I want to help somehow. I want to figure it out. Mm. Um, but no, I, I, like watching the live stream yesterday, like it was typical Collingwood game, you know, play three quarters, start the fourth quarter really well, kick quite a few goals, get ahead. Everyone thinks the game's over. And then uh, the weird thing about last night was they started coming back and kicked those last like three or four goals pretty quickly. And, I think like watching this this stream, it was like Ross Lyon was like laughing in the box. <laughs> yeah. He was like, "Why didn't we Why? play like this the whole game?" <laughs> that kind of thing. But um, the weird thing about us and as a, a team is like we've got different styles of play, right? So we've got very attacking and mm-hmm. things like that. And w- oddly enough, somehow we end up scoring and playing better whenever we just go gun ho attack. Mm-hmm. And it's a weird. I don't. I don't understand. I, I don't get it. Maybe it's just because like we all are offensive mindset, but. We tend to go a lot better whenever we just think offense, like just go, just go. And um, maybe I don't know what structurally what happened. We'll find out in the next few days, I guess, when we're coming to the club. But structurally, you might have put it one behind the ball and that made us in a defensive mindset. I'm not really sure. But mm. yeah, for me, it was like stress central 101. <laughs> I was like, we can't drop this game. Like, surely <laughs> not. Like, it's been a bit of a slog. Like, it wasn't a high scoring game like I probably mm. predicted. Like, I thought it'd be a lot more high scoring. Um, and each goal was so impactful. So. Yeah, I was I was just hiding in the corner watching it. The seconds tick down and then the ball in the four fifty and then <laughs> Darcy Moore kinda like put his hand down, just essentially like held the ball on the four fifty and I was like, <laughs> Thank you, finally. So it just like locks this thing in. And then Darcy just backed away like he didn't do anything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what about when Crispy had it in the back pocket down the line and we think, here we go again, it's going straight back in, but nah, the fence was pretty strong oh, at the end. Man, it's um uh, it scares the hell out of me sometimes. But I I've been it's kind of a weird thing over the last year because Darcy Cameron's been uh, probably the ruckman at the end of the game. So I've been off at times and really some of these close games mm-hmm. and you're just sitting there and like, you're, yeah, just, what's that you, like you're helpless. The- <laughs> like yeah, you like- just go like, please, please. You're just yelling at people like from the sideline, like there's that man, there's that man, like cover that man, kind of trying to help out where you can. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a weird feeling whenever you're not playing, mm-hmm. watching it um, and you can't do anything about it. But yeah, it was a bit nerve-wracking, as probably most Collingwood supporters oh, yeah. were uh, were thinking. But 
uh, luckily enough, you know, uh, level heads prevailed and we got the win. Let's get through the votes as we always like to do. One, two, threes from the game. We don't have the fans ones yet. We're still waiting for those ones to come through, but keep an eye out on our social media pages as always for those to be completed. But Marcus, three, two, ones for the week. Thank you, Nicholas. One vote this week went to Billy Frampton. I thought he stepped yes. up and gave us shape and one for the big fellas. And uh, two votes to Brody Majacek, another big fella who was just throwing his weight around and getting the job done yesterday. I was really impressed with his game. And three votes again to you know who. We'll just keep moving on. Nico? We call <laughs> him you know who. We call him God. Jack's God, given him God. So we'll, we'll take what we God can. God like status. God like status. We'll, we'll That's finish it. there. Yeah. 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 Uh, I also gave one to Billy Frampton for the exact things that we've mentioned. His ability to go in the ruck and really try help neutralise that matchup and allowed our midfielders to really get things going at times throughout the game as well. I gave two to one of my favourite recruits when we, we brought him in, Bobby Hill. Mm. Bobby Hill gets my two votes. Three goals. Now 10 for the season. I said he kicked 25 plus. He's already well on top of that. He's a special player, isn't he, Mace? I mean, we're getting his full potential. I feel like him coming into the club. He's embraced the way he wanted to play football and I think he's taking the next steps in his career a lot quicker than maybe some others have thought. Yeah, he's um, my favourite play is this little dribbler to Jack and then Jack kicks the goal. Yeah, I know. Uh, wow, just like kind of to think that, like, I don't know, and like the half second to make that decision to do that, like, is mm. just phenomenal. It's like perfect kick that bounced straight up to him. Mm. Um, yeah, Bobby's one of those like people, he's just a, he's a freak out. He's one of the fastest guys and like he'll chase it down or burst uh, speed out of a contest and once he's got one step in front of you, you're, you're, he's gone. <laughs> like, there's no catching him. So, He's been he's been awesome as a recruit. He's such a he's a really nice guy too. Like I don't know, like I can't say anything negative about him. Like he's just <laughs> such a loving like yeah. human. Like you just want to give him a hug every time you see him. Um, yeah, he's been awesome. He's been awesome for the forward line. Um, he's brought a bit of a spark, I think that um, that we always enjoy. And he's unique in his own right. But yeah, he's been playing really well. Uh, a three two one for me. Do you want a three two one? For I was going to say I don't need to even need to say my three. Oh, we awesome. can move on Straight because on we know exactly you, who Coxie. it's going to be. Let's go, Mace. Um, what do you reckon? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll go. Jeez, I'll go one to Checkers. I love Checkers yeah. game. Um, golly, that's, that's tough three two one. Mm, but it is this week. I love to give credit to people that probably people don't see what they do behind the scenes. Like I think Checkers at one point got like tackled by three people, picked the ball up again, got tackled again, then handballed to Bobby and then goal square. Yeah, yeah that was like, absolutely stuff like that. Is like that's not talent. That's just pure want and want to be mm -hmm. able to to get through it. So he's a bull, an absolute bull, um, and he's he's one of those people you just kind of. You look at and you're like, I can trust you one on one, 100. percent I don't need to worry about it. So, I'll go checkers one, Murph two. I've said that yeah, reason nice. why Murph was a insane defensively last night. Um, and I'll go yeah three to to Nick because he's just getting the pill everywhere. But then like I don't know, like <laughs> like I said, like that's the thing that everyone can see. Everyone can see a stat like that, you know, where like Brody Marchek and Billy Frampton and like the situations like that you can't see as much. So mm. it's easy to give three there, but at the same time, like me. I'll, like Nick had a great game doing it wrong, but like I want to put someone else up there. <laughs> yeah. We do too because I think we're just like in love with the fact that he's dominating so much, but it's also like who else is actually playing well because yeah. literally since the start of the season, he's featured in the votes every single week mm -hmm. and we do it independently, but it's like when you're getting 12 to 15 disposals more than the next guy on the team... That counts for something. He's just I, just, I don't magnet. value stats, though. No, I'm talking to the wrong guy. Yeah, he's talking <laughs> to the wrong guy. Like, if you don't talk about stats, you go to the umpires and the, <laughs> you know, go to the end where they do the brown low votes. That's all stats. It's a midfielder's yeah, award. So it is. We've got another segment that we love here Ask Pies Nation, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. We're everywhere, pretty much. That's that's what we like to say. We're everywhere. <laughs> Gives the fans chances to, you know, send in their questions. We put out a question ourselves and we get heaps of comments flooding through on all Instagram and Facebook and Twitter pages. And of course, when the news broke that you were coming through, we got hundreds and hundreds. So thank you to everybody, of course, who gets those comments through. Got a few that we want to read out for you before mm. we start wrapping up your time here. Anthony underscore Andronis on Instagram. Which coach player... Or mentor, do you owe your success to in terms of helping you learn the ins and outs of Australian rules football? Do you have one? I'm sure there'd be plenty around. Yeah, well, I think I think it's been pretty public knowledge of, I guess, like Craig McCrae mm. being one of the first coaches. And um, him and Anthony Rocker are probably the two people I have to give the most credit to. And Derek Hine, who was the recruiter that brought me over to Collingwood. Um, a lot of credit I've talked about before is, is Craig. Like Craig, whenever I first landed here, was one of the first people I met, took me and his family. Um, especially whenever I was so far away from my family, like it's it's a tough thing to move countries and then start learning a sport you don't know anything mm. about. So 
um, he took me in and we became really close, essentially hanging out every single day. So uh, to me now, like I'll talk about the reason I play football and things like that is he spent so much time to get me to where I was to be able to be successful in the IFL. Now it's like this full circle moment where I can essentially have the opportunity to pay that back which is pretty cool. So mm. um, now I'm in that moment of my career where I'm probably towards the back end rather than the front end. I'm not mm. afraid to say that, but um, now it's like, you know, whatever you want from me to make this team win, like I'll do. And it's kind of this um, pretty special thing that I don't think a lot of people probably get the opportunity to do is give back to the people who have given so much to yourself and in, in life. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with Craig. So I've got this amazing, I guess like debt that I owe him, I feel like mm. to, for what he had done for me to get to me to where I am today um and he's done so much for me it's been he's an incredible human like i said and i'll have nothing but positive things to say about him but um himself anthony rocco who spent a lot of time with ruck work and craft in that sense um anthony was probably more body work marking and things like that where craig was like teaching the actual game of mm. this is the way an umpire points whenever this is <laughs> and this yeah. is what you're supposed to do like it's just like which is i mean a lot of people probably take for a granted because they're like oh, i've grown up with this where like craig was like here's a crash course of what afl is but then you had to go and play and the umpires often get it wrong, which would have confused you even more, right? Yeah. Oh, dude, I can tell you stories on stories <laughs> about that. Um, Darcy Moore is one of the best because he just like, he <laughs> played with me for like a year, like through the VFL a little bit here and there. And then he got to the AFL level and never looked back. But um, through those, yeah, I think there's one uh, played on from the goal square, smothered in Frankston. You got the bongos on the hill and they're all giving you shit, you know. <laughs> and then there's another one, um, I think it's the same game. And um I'd done something stupid and got a free kick or something like that. And then the guy asked for the ball back and I just like left it on the ground, a bit of a F you. I was like 50 and I was like, for what? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, we have manners in this league. We have to give it to the person personally. And I was like, good Lord, you want to gift wrap with that? <laughs> anyway, so there's uh, it's been interesting things over the years that I've had to learn. But um, yeah, there's no, there's no better way than just throwing you into the deep end and seeing if you can swim. Mm-hmm. Interesting one here from Nadine on Instagram. As a doctor, I'm in awe of your ability to bounce back from <laughs> sight-threatening retinal detachments and now a splenic bleed. How do you motivate yourself to continue? I'm really interested in your mental strength and your belief. I'm a bit of a prick, maybe. I'm not really... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like to lose. I'm a competitive person. Uh, it's kind of funny. Actually, today, I just went to the doctor that did my eye and all the surgeries and stuff, and he took a stitch out this morning. So... Um, last time I did that, I passed out. So this, this today I didn't, which was a big, big Glad win, yep. uh, big win. But, um, yeah, no, it's a, it's a weird thing. I think that oh, I've talked about it before is like that, that moment, remember that eye injury happened and well, then I was going to play football again and the career and being away from family and friends and, and all that, like it was tough. Like it was a unique time in the, in the club. Like you, at times you kind of felt like you were forgotten. Um, but there was people, I think that, that reached out and you realize now whenever you're in those really terrible times of life and, in dark days, like those people that do reach out are the ones mm. that actually do give a shit about you and um, they're going to be there for a long time in your life and it's not just a situational thing of you work together kind of thing. Um, so there were some amazing people that did that. Uh, I think a lot of people throughout the years, and it's part of Australian culture, is really looking after people that maybe uh, don't have family or don't have friends here. Like, I mean, the day I landed here, I talked about like Craig and, mm. and Anthony and they took me in as their own and took me to their family dinners and things like that. And I think that's part of Australian culture. Um, at least the good people of Australia <laughs> like I don't know there might be different ones out there but I've always experienced amazing things and I always kind of think like I could, I could have landed in a lot worse situation where I don't speak the language um, I didn't have the support that I did um, I'd be walking around with an interpreter every single day and not know what I'm doing like here in Australia most people know what's going on in America they're mm. interested in American sports like they all speak English there's so much crossover where I landed here and I already felt comfortable or like other situations i've got friends that played basketball and they land in serbia or lithuania or whatever it is yeah, and they're right. like i literally have no idea what to do <laughs> i just sit in my apartment all day because i don't i can't talk to anyone they don't Crazy. speak my language mm. like and they just feel alone like really alone and I've, I've felt like really alone and isolated at times in my life but um whenever i do have that i know i have that like real close group of people i can go to and and reach out to and they always kind of look after me and it's a mini kind of family over mm. here now like we talk about every year i go to have a Thanksgiving dinner and it's like Craig used to do that and come to my Thanksgiving dinner for like the first four or five years we did it and it was in like a shitty two bedroom apartment like we couldn't fit 10 Perfect. people in there and like Craig came with his um, his missus at the time and stuff and it was just one of those things it's like 
I don't know, looking back now, I'm so embarrassed that I invited Craig to a shitty two bedroom no. <laughs> like Thanksgiving meal now that we're both kind of in our own situation. But like he, he knew that meant a lot to me and he made sure he made the time to come to it and, mm. and uh, be part of that situation. So there's things like that that now I look back now and I'm like, wow, like I didn't think probably as much of it at the time, but now I've kind of looked at it retrospectively and realized like that's him doing extra and above to make me feel comfortable in this mm. country and make me feel comfortable as a person. So yeah, it's uh, it's incredible. Like that's uh, that's a long winded way of answering your question. I think, but it's oh, a perfect way. I think mm. we'll wrap up with AJ Shedick on Instagram. Speaking of the US, of course, has been a rise in popularity for AFL reaction videos from American YouTubers, possibly thanks to you. Where do you see the sport going in popularity and exposure for the overseas markets? Uh, it's a bit of watch the space at the moment. Okay, um, I've got a re- I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'm about to come out with a YouTube series that will explain AFL to Americans a lot better. Um, and that's going to come over the next like two to three weeks. Uh, so have a look out, check nice. that out, uh, which would be really cool. So I think for myself, it'd be cool to have a bit of a library for people in America that I talk to and things like that to be like, you know, what, what is it you do? It's like, oh, here's like YouTube. Bang. Mm. Like, this is exactly like, and if you get more interested, here's like detailed breakdown of what everything means coming from an American who's had to learn the sport from scratch. Mm-hmm. So um, I've tried to do this with the AFL for years. Um, they unfortunately don't see value in it. Uh, we can't afford it I'm not, I'm not really too sure they haven't really given me a direct answer but these things um are something i'm very passionate about and something i think um there's a big gap in the market for and there's something that is definitely um worthwhile there and uh, on april 29th or 30th i think it is um 60 minutes usa has done a piece on me in the u.s oh, wow. which will be probably the biggest thing uh, in exposure of afl in a country outside of australia maybe ever mm. i don't know um and that was something I had to do off my own bat and ask for like permission from everyone to get it all sorted. And mm. um, I see massive value in it. Like I think it's like 13 million people watch it every yeah, single nice. Sunday. So 13 million to an, in- an industry that has no idea what AFL is. is probably a, something you should be interested in. But yeah, it's something I think from my standpoint, I've had to really push to get exposure, to get care from people at the higher, you know, higher up on the chain mm. to show that there is interest, to show that there is possibility and stuff. I think there's probably the understanding of from them is what is the financial benefit of this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something a bit of watch this space. I'm definitely passionate about it. I'm going to start putting more time and effort into it to try to help uh, people over the seas, explain it to people and help build the game internationally from, um, you know, just in knowing what it is perspective, like there's social media and everything else. Like we all have access to anything mm. we want. Like, Sure, we've got AI things, right? And whatever it is, and chat GBT and all that. Like, I mean, there's yeah. that many options for us to do amazing things. Like, and it shouldn't be a sport that's just isolated to this small, small, relatively small population country, you know, in the corner of the world. Like, everyone yeah. should be aware of this and can be aware of this. It's not, there's no restrictions anymore. So, um, I think it's a sport that a lot of people, every time they see it, I don't know if you know many Americans or people overseas, they watch one clip and they're like, you're crazy, man. Like, this is the most insane thing <laughs> no ever. Pads. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, no yeah. pads. Like, no pads. This is nuts, bro. Like, and everyone's so just enthralled by it. Like, mm. there's, and that's like, that's the sign 101 that there is interest. And For it's sure. Just, it just has to be tapped. And that's what I'm going to hopefully do over the next year. And hopefully um, the AFL can see value in that. And because you're so well-spoken, Mace, you've just got ambassador written all over you. I'll try. Reckon. No, seriously. I mean, no. I'm sure Gil McLaughlin's listening to this podcast oh, yeah. as Every well. week. Every week. So, also, every Gil, week. if you want to, uh, someone to take over your job after, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. <laughs> From the States? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, I haven't filled it yet. I haven't yes. filled the role yet. Oh, so. No, but I, I agree. I think it is an untapped market and you being the first you know, true exponent from the States to come out and, and play Aussie rules and make a career from it, if anyone's listening, I think there's a, a life after footy awaiting you, Mace. I think there's no better chance to bring the game, exposure of the game overseas than right now as an American playing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if this will ever happen again, to be honest. I don't know. I mean, I hope I can bring someone else in. They can break all the things I've yep. done and be better yeah. than I ever was. But um, I don't know if there'll be a better time in AFL history for them to bring the game over to somewhere, somewhere mm-hmm. else and have an ambassador that's playing at the same time, bring the game and attention to another industry that has... 13 and a half times as many people as Australia. Yeah, go it's figure. Nice. <laughs> like, it's it's a numbers game. Like, you get yeah. 1% of the American population. It's the same population as Melbourne. Yeah, Every single person mm-hmm. to know what AFL Same. is. 
Insane. Preaching to the choir, mate. It's like, it does my head in to yeah. try to like talk to people about it. They just go, oh yeah, that's actually a good idea. And I'm like, oh shit, you're like. like <laughs> I'm sure that 60 minutes piece is going to do wonders, yeah. Coxie. So looking 100%. forward to watching yeah. that. Yeah. Good, yeah. Wanted to ask you about Anzac Day. Of course. Yeah, I love an Anzac not gonna, Day. I love not, a big game. Not going to be there, unfortunately. So shout you're not going to be no, there. No, no, and you're not going to be there. Oh, uh, no, I'll be physically, physically. there. I won't well, be of course. I'll be, I'll be hanging course. out in the locker room. Well, and in spirit. Yeah. yeah. In all ways, other than actually playing but yes absolutely he will be which we're looking really forward to you really trying to dig to. yourself out of that hole um, yeah, <laughs> thanks for that thanks for that Marcus um, of course you made your debut on Anzac Day that's been yep. highly publicised about you know just how incredible it was first mark of the day first goal of the day and the rest is history as they say mm. what does Anzac Day mean to you personally and what are you expecting from the Bombers in a week's time they've had a pretty decent run of form unfortunately I hate having to say that but mm. Um, yeah, it's shaping up to be a pretty good clash. Yeah, it's been it's been interesting. I was actually, so you said I played my first game, Anzac Day, played my 50th game, Anzac Day. Mm. And if I didn't get injured, I was going to play my 100th oh, yeah. game ah, on Anzac oh, Day. Yeah. So it was going to be a pretty special thing. So mom and dad had never wanted to book their flights out ready for it. They jinxed oh. me and I got injured. So uh, they've canceled those flights from uh, for the moment. But yeah, I think Anzac Day has always been a, a special thing. I think for me, it's, it's a unique perspective because I'm not understanding of the traditions and understanding of everything whenever I first came here. You know, I remember the first one I had, I was real nervous to play and I'm sitting there and I'm like just shaking. So I'm like a year and a half and less than a year and a half into knowing what the sport is essentially. Mm. And I'm sitting there playing on the biggest stage and in front of a massive crowd and I remember her like sitting there and I at that point didn't know a single word of either anthem and we're sitting there facing nothing, and you know, and they start playing and I got boys left and right of me singing it and I'm just like Just happy to be here. Well, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, that kind of made me laugh and got me a bit the nerves kinda of shaking a bit. Um, away from me but yeah it's uh it's unique man I, I, I don't know like i talked to anzac day is similar to um you know our memorial day or patriots day back home and it's not like i mean football's great don't get me wrong but that's not what it's about um i think if you've ever been to a dawn service um you, you do realize i guess how much this country has respect for its servicemen and women uh it's a pretty amazing thing and i think every single player that's played in anzac day would just say they're more honored to be a part of that day and I guess have somewhat of the blessing to bring more attention to the fact of um, what people are giving up to, you know, fight for our rights and fight for our freedoms that we do have in this amazing country that we probably take for granted. And, um, you know, to, to play on that day, to have, you know, be part of the experience and uh, everything else and the, the minute of silence and the respect that's given there. And it's just, a, it's kind of like a chill feeling. Like, I mean, I get chills even like talking about it now. Like, and it's something I didn't, even know existed beforehand mm. and then coming over here like it's such a such a cool experience to be part of and something i'm extremely honored to have played in quite a few of them um and yeah it's just uh it's it's amazing but like i said the day is so much bigger than that um like the the dawn service everything else i can't you know incentivize people or tell people to go to the dawn services anymore like it's it's an amazing experience to see that many people i remember the 100th anniversary going to mm. anzac um, memorial and seeing like over a hundred thousand people there was just like insanity like i don't think you would get that in many other places in the world mm. and um yeah it's it's something we probably don't think about on a daily basis of what people give up and what people do and travel across the world and put their life on the line and all these things for us just to be able to record podcasts and yeah. hang out and like have a great time and just like live a, an amazing life and you know there are sacrifices that people have to make for us to be able to do that and it's cool to have this day you know, to be a, uh, a thing there to, to show respect to it and, and give a day to them really more than anything, which is awesome. And to play footy on that day is so minuscule compared to everything else, but it's awesome to, to help bring attention to that fact of the matter, yeah. 100%. And we're looking forward to seeing, hopefully the Pies chalk up another win next mm. week. Continue oh, the Sorry, season. the second part of that question was Essendon. <laughs> Apologies, I'm just talking my ear. No, no, no we love it. Um, we love it. No, Essendon's going really well. Essendon's like, it's cool. I, I think it's great. It's awesome to see the big clubs going well. And it means like you get big games, you know, you get a lot of attention, you get mm. a lot of like hype, you get all that kind of stuff mm. in the media. Like, and it's just, it's cool to see. And like, you know, everyone knows Anzac Day is a big game on the calendar, but now it's like just got even more of a build up. Mm. And it's like, oh, both teams are going well. And this is a, you know, every week's a test of whether or not you're going to make the top <laughs> eight, you know, it's like, yeah. but then you get these big games and these are the ones you look back on of being like, oh man, you remember that Anzac Day from this day, like this year, whatever it is, such and such happened. Mm. Like, don't get me wrong, whenever you play a certain amount of games, sometimes they get, a little bit lost i couldn't tell you you know if we played the gold coast suns or Frio on a round one or seven or whatever it is you know course, but like yeah. i can tell you every anzac game i played in mm. i can tell you exactly what happened wow. like and it's those awesome experiences that you're like 
this is why we play football. Yeah. Like, this is one of the reasons I went to the Colonial Football Club. So I get to play in front of big crowds. And it's like, if I want to come half a world away to play a game I know nothing about, I want to do Make it, to it the best good. Of my ability. <laughs> yeah, like, I want to have a damn good time doing it and tell some really crazy stories about it. And I've been able to do that, which is awesome. So, mm. um, yeah, Essendon's going really well. It's awesome to see them going well. McGraw probably out for the week. Uh, Murph out for the week. Uh, there's going to be some changes, I think, in that sense. Mm. Um, it's not going to be a, a full squad, per se, for both teams, but uh, it'll still be a great, I think, test. And, you know, it'll be a, a test for us with a, a few people out and see if we can kind of hold up, even though we're, we're somewhat depleted. Mm. Marcus, did you have anything before we wrap up with Mason today? Well, on balance, Nick, I thought it was only fair a, a few seasons ago, Mace, when the Pies were having, I guess, more challenges than they are on the win-loss uh, mm. depart- ratio. We were we were surveying your game amongst others, and what we noticed time and time again was either the umpire was not looking at the uh, defender <laughs> hanging off you, that was stopping you from uh, putting your other arm up, yeah. fair call, uh, or it wasn't going up at all. And then I looked at your first few games this year, and your contested marking, mate, has, has anything changed for you in terms of your technique, or do you think it's just, um, or is there anything there? Because I just am... Um, in ad- absolute admiration <laughs> for how you're clunking them. And it's such a shame that you won't be out there on Anzac Day this week. But just wanted to say that in uh, previous seasons, we'd highlighted that as mm. part of your game. And to see that grow over the last season or two, absolutely amazing. So Yeah, umpire is still same thing. Um, <laughs> it doesn't change. They don't, the weird thing is umpiring doesn't change. Sorry, it changes based on the player they're umpiring, mm. which blows my mind. Mm-hmm. If you have a little man going up and gets his arm shot, free kick. If it's yeah. a big man, tough shit, man. Like it's like you get you know height and you know, we're gonna try to cut you back to make it even. Like are there particular umpires thing. as well that you've noticed over the journey that just don't oh, give you much? Really He's opened person. up a no, can of no, words there. There's, no, there's no names that need <laughs> no, to be dropped here. I'm just curious if there's a vendetta or like Oh, there's I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's probably some umpires that don't appreciate some of the feedback I give them. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but um there is there is there is difference in how umpires different umpires um, umpire. Um, I probably wouldn't be privy or understanding or in the game knowing like all oh, that umpire doesn't call for yeah, kicks yeah, like yeah. kind of thing you know. But I will say this as a ruckman, you know which ones can do a center bounce, and you mm-hmm. know which ones bounce at high and which ones bounce at low. Oh. Uh, there's little things like that you do uh-huh. pick up like even pregame you'll sit there and I'll I'll walk out and I'll look at the umpires all of them try a center bounce and I'll realize which ones can bounce high and which ones can't bounce and which ones are, go very sideways uh-huh. and you try to kind of manipulate that so whenever you get to the game you kind of get an understanding before you get into the yeah, center yeah. bounce of how it's going to actually play out so there is little like things you can learn like that mm-hmm. as far as umpires because each one's very different but um, <laughs> no the funny thing very is different. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. I've become friends with some of the umpires over the years and um, the US AFL both my brothers play AFL in the States and it's like a whole right. family thing now and the IFL flies myself and some other umpires over there to, to kind of be, I guess, like the ambassadors for it and help grow the game over there. So I've kind of traveled with a few umpires and got to know mm-hmm. them over the years. And like away from the field, like I think they're very understanding. Like in the game, heat of the moment, don't take it personal, mate. Like I'm just like, I'm a different human once I cross that white line. And it's nothing against you. It's nothing against the players. Yep. Like, I am a totally different human whenever I cross that white line. I come a bit of a prick. Like I just become a bit of a prick, and that's just how I am. Good. So, yeah, that's but it's like, but I know I play better whenever I'm that way. So that's just like how I have to do it. But mm. um, yeah, umpires, I think they're understanding the same as players. Once the siren goes and everyone's mates again, and like I think some player, I mean, when I first came here, I was like, this is weird. Like this guy literally punched me in the back two seconds ago. The siren goes, and he's asking <laughs> how my family is, saying like, what a great story. And I'm like, this is bullshit. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Um, so it's it's a weird dynamic. But I think yeah, umpires like they're pretty understanding that in the heat of the moment, um, everyone's gonna have be acting totally different to how they would act away from the game mm. uh but yeah it's there's there's a lot of questions around umpiring nowadays <laughs> it's probably it's not just umpiring it's i don't i feel bad for him because it's probably the direction from higher up of what to do like mm. it's a very opinionated game so whether or not someone's high tackled whether or not someone's gonna hold the ball like that's very opinionated it's not yeah. a clear cut here x y or z like so it's tough i think from their standpoint to adjudicate it sometimes and then you have, I mean, I, I don't know, like sling tackles and all this other stuff that's going from the MRO. And then we talked about the ruck stuff last week. Like, there's so many things that are, I guess, like moving parts from AFL side. They're telling the umpires and the umpires have to adjudicate it somehow. And they're probably copping the criticism where it's really not their fault because someone above them probably hasn't given them a clear cut answer of what's yes and what's not. They're like politicians. You know, the political party oh, yeah. behind them is almost adjudicating what they can and can't say. So yeah. it, it, it's hard. And week to week, that changes as well. Nico. It, it's funny you brought that up because we've just found out that Tal Adams has been offered a one-game suspension. Tal Adams? For his, yeah, for his uh, tackle. I don't, I don't know. even know which tackle that was. It's like... <laughs> I've had the eye. I'd love to see what um, happened to uh, 
Nathan Murphy's uh, opponent oh, in the game. But, but yeah, anyway. I mean, I, one of these days, I would just love to go to a um, tribunal and just... It'd be fascinating, wouldn't it? Oh, I've just, been to one. Oh, yeah, you have too, I've been you? to one. Yes. And, um, oh, man, What's it like? I shouldn't ask, <laughs> I shouldn't ask the Be careful, mate. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to hurt you. I might, not play, this. I might <laughs> not play this year if I keep talking. Um, <laughs> no, nah, I've been to one. It's a unique experience. It's mm. very weird. I, I okay. always find it odd that you can... I guess like fight something that they talk about, but like I said, because it's so opinionated, I guess they have to get someone else's opinion yep. to mm. make sure it's correct or wrong. Um, you can say, hey, shout out to Carlton's lawyer. Apparently, can get off oh. any Carlton player. That's like, just typical wow. of that club. Yeah, I just, I mean, like two cases. You got Crips last, and then what was the other one recently? There was Harry. another player, Harry. Yep, yeah, and both of them got off. I've never seen. It was just like unique, but um, Bit of it's like yeah, money it's under just, the table. Then oh, I didn't say that. I didn't say. I don't that, want to even bring that club up. Um, um, it's just, just, it's just interesting, like how <laughs> you can go to a, a fake courtroom <laughs> at AFL House, who's adjudicating this. Yeah. Like, it's like essentially going to a court at someone's house about something. It's like, okay, can you imagine? Okay, I'm I'm at home. I don't do the dishes, right? Right. And then we have a court case about the fact that I didn't do the dishes <laughs> in the living room, like. <laughs> Essentially, is what the AFL does. It's being at home every week. What are you talking about? And then about? you get fined, what, like two grand? And there's probably 10 people there that get paid probably, you know, $500 an hour. And you're sitting there going, like, okay, who's really losing out here? Like, is it really for the fact that someone's actually, you know, we're going to find them $2,000? Or is it because we know the media buildup and everything else is yep. going to create more money Stories. than $2,000 mm-hmm. and whatever we have to pay these lawyers? That you know, it's worth our time. Like, you so might at the end be of the day, something. you might. Be I, I'm just something. saying, I think the tribunal's <laughs> hilarious. Like, I don't think there's any other t- like thing in the world that does this. You know, I know maybe rugby does. I'm not sure, but it's unique to Australia. Mm. The whole thing was phenomenal to dress up in a suit, walk in, be told what's going to happen, sit down for two hours, and answer questions, yes or no, about <laughs> you know whether or not someone crossed a line and someone hit someone first, and how the momentum worked, and the bullshit of it like it's just ridiculous and then you go out and there's a million cameras and they all take a photo no one ever says anything you just walk out the door and it's all over the Herald Sun the next day like Theater. it's just theatrics it's the whole thing yeah, is yeah. theatrics and it's yeah. ridiculous but <laughs> these things happen this is how it works um, and that's just how the AFL has always been they probably will never change it mm-hmm. Mason it's been a privilege to have you on and we hope you've enjoyed your time just as much always as we about. have been able to talk to you um, all the best for the recovery, first getting back onto the Mason Cox show and then, of course, getting back onto the field to lead us to Premiership 16. So it's been an honour and thank you again for coming into the studio. No, thanks for having me, boys, and um, appreciate you plugging the pod. It's a mad love to that. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's, it's awesome what you all are doing here. Credit to you, what you build here. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to see passionate supporters doing amazing things and um, the community you've been able to, to create. This halftime break is brought to you by Liquorland. Liquorland have all your drink needs for when the siren calls like the recently launched Victoria Bitter Extra Bottles. Marcus, not a bad drink to have straight off the shelf while watching the footy. Extra what, Nick? Extra Bottles. Extra Bottles. Extra Bottles. Well, there's only one way to find out what those things are, so get on down to Liquorland. Pop into your local Liquorland today or shop online and click and collect in just 30 minutes. Liquorland, from the land you love. Please drink responsibly. Welcome back to the Pies Nation podcast, where the pies are hot and the drinks are cold. Marcus, what an awesome chat that was with the one and only Mason Cox. I think he really enjoyed himself. Yeah, Mace was fantastic, giving us his time. Expect nothing less from him and wonderful to get a player on the pod. Mm, Absolutely. So hopefully the fans have enjoyed that one. And who knows, he might be coming back on pretty soon. Let's just wait and see on that one. But... Let's head to the VFL wrap. Unfortunately, no guest to crowd this week, but we will keep in touch with that person and we'll get him on on a future day, that's for sure. VFL wrap, Marcus. Unfortunately, Box Hill getting the job done over our pies. A pretty inexperienced 22, we sort of fielded and uh, couldn't get the job done. Yeah, big losers again, Mm. unfortunately, Nick. I'm not sure if we're seeing a ripple effect of those tall stocks being decimated at the moment, but we did go down 114 255, never really got going, and it was just uh, really that second quarter where the Hawks piled on eight goals to our two, and really the margin remained thereabouts thereafter. So we move on. Campbell Husswaite uh, landed 33 disposals, so big game for him. McRae and Carmichael also looking strong. The one I really wanted to talk to was Nathan Kruger, though, Nico. Mm. This holds huge uh, not consequence, but there is an impact on this game against the Bombers knowing how many tall stocks we have out. So three disposals and a goal. I'm not sure if this says limited game time and just did what he could or if there's a little bit of an injury concern there. But he all of a sudden has a huge potential role on Anzac Day. I think he does. And I think he may not have had the biggest game 
over the weekend, but he almost has to come in because we've had to play Billy Frampton in that ruck roll over the Saints game, and he did a terrific job, that's for sure. But we're going to have to need we're going to need him to play down back, particularly with no Nathan Murphy now he's injured and a pretty a fairly tall Essendon forward line. It means he's going to have to play that role, and unless there are ways around that that would ensure that Frampton does play, well, time would tell. But um, for me, I think that this is Kruger's opportunity. He's come back. Um, under less experience before when we played him as a sub in the final series and then he ended up playing some minutes in our final. So um, not, I guess, anything that he doesn't mm. know before, but yeah, whether that's going to be the way forward, at least for the short term, we know that, of course, Coxie won't be there. But um, yeah, I think that might be the way we have to move. Very curly position to be in for Fly and the coaching staff having to potentially play someone you might have waited a week or two longer if indeed he needs a bit more conditioning. Mm. But like you say, I think based on our lack of tall stocks, really, he has to come in. We do play the Dons in uh, Sunday at Vic Park, 3 p.m., so get on down for that. The Dons are eighth. We are seventh on the ladder. Ooh, big and game. in the ones, it's third versus second. Ooh. So a lot on the line this week and a lot of pride on the line as well. So get on down on Sunday. We will, I think, bounce back in the ones and in the twos, no doubt about it. So that's my assessment. What has the surge got for us? Surge, VFL notes, undermanned pies outclassed by Hawks to 59 points. Former Pies in Max Lynch and Callum Brown dominated, which was a big thing as well. They both had pretty strong games, maybe trying to prove a point to some of our uh, VFL mm. boys. Josh Carmichael is a bull and McRae our best. Krugs is better for the run. Rusko also played well. Not sure why Glover is in defence and Cully on the wing. Merely kicked two goals back at Vic Park next week. Go Pies. So some great notes there as always from the surge and hopefully our reserves can get back on the winners list. The VFLW girls did get a win as well. They defeated Box Hill by 24 points. It was only one goal of difference at three-quarter time, but they were able to produce a four-goal to one last term, and it was enough to get them back into the top six. They take over the Box Hill Hawks into fourth spot, um, and they now have a big clash coming up this week against the Bombers as well. So all our sides, of course, mm. playing Essendon, who have found themselves, they were the reigning premiers last year in the VFLW. They're now... Um, outside the six or an eight spot. So good chance for Collingwood okay. to continue their little win streak they've got going. But on what's been a pretty excellent episode, I think, that's about all we have time for for this week's. Keep, as I should say, stay tuned um, for some Anzac Day content in the lead up to our massive clash on Tuesday against the Bombers. So we'll have plenty of previews for you in the lead up, but uh, pretty successful show, I reckon. It was awesome, Nico. Have you got a Wednesday headline and a Brownlow? Uh, sorry, Brownlow. Brownlow. Anzac, Anzac, Nick Dacos. I was going to say. Anzac Day medalist for me. I was going to say that the uh, Brownlow would be easy to tip right now. Um, I hope you mean Tuesday, considering we play on a Tuesday. But the day after the Wednesday headline? Oh, I would be right. Yes, yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, 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 you're, yeah. On, you're on the board. Um, Wednesday headline, Jack goes back to back, kicks another five and wins <laughs> the Anzac Day medal. Um, it's his time. I think, you know, there was a bit of skeptics about whether he was meant to come back into the side. Um, I think he did slowly get himself into the game. We heard Mace talking about how he's been progressing over the last few weeks. But um, yeah, Anzac Day, we know he loves that stage. I reckon he bags another five and he uh, yeah wins another Anzac Day medal. What about you? I reckon I was confused with my Brownlow and my Anzac Day tip there because it's the same person. Oh, there you go. Nick Day costs 35 touches, three goals, and there's your medal. And wins it. Yeah, that, I mean... That's probably more likely to happen than just anything else, I think. It's not fantasy land, is it? It's not. It's not. We're we're saying this as realistic, confident Collingwood supporters, I should say. But until then, that's all we've got time for on this week's edition of the Pies Nation podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to follow us, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you name it, we're there. Get onto iTunes, Spotify, give us that five-star rating. And get onto the Mason Cox Show. Mason Cox Show. Whatever you do. Absolutely. A fantastic production and... We're definitely one that we're looking forward to collaborating with on more than one occasion. But until then, I've been your host, Nicholas Sacco. You've been listening to the Pies Nation podcast, where the pies are hot and the drinks are cold. Thanks for listening to the Pies Nation podcast, and thanks to Liquorland, who are proud partners of the show. Liquorland have all your drink needs for when the siren calls. Liquorland, from the land you love. Please drink responsibly.